Growing up as a kid here in England, there was one question you were always asked when talking about football games. Were you a FIFA or an ISS kid? For me personally, I was always an international superstar soccer kid. I love the more arcade style gameplay and the pacing of the game when compared to the more methodical simulation style of the FIFA series. After the sublime ISS games on the Super Nintendo, I was eagerly awaiting what the next generation of sports games would look like on the N64. If you've already seen my review of FIFA 64, you'll know how disappointing it was and perhaps one of the worst games on the system. After having been left with a sour taste in my mouth from EA's cash-in, I was also counting down the days until the release of ISS 64, especially after Miyamoto himself said that the game was proof that some of the third-party developers could create N64 games which would surpass their own in-house games. International Superstar Soccer 64 was developed and published by Konami and released around the world in mid-1997. Surprisingly, there are some minor differences between the regional releases. For example, some teams are present in the Western release, teams like South Africa, but there are some teams like Canada which only appear in the Japanese game. Also taking into account gamer skills, the Japanese version of the game is far easier to score in and the difficulty was ramped up quite a bit for its European release. ISS 64 wasn't just the best football game on the console, it was the best football game on any console at that time. There were a total of six game modes to choose from, including all of the staples such as Exhibition, League, Cup and Penalty Kicks, but it was the Scenario mode which I always adored. In this mode you are given classic moments from football history and with varying difficulty you must try to complete the objectives you are given. It could range from holding a lead against an onslaught of attacks or turning around a defeat at the last moment. You play a snapshot of the match in this mode but there's something satisfying about completing the missions that you are given. One of the biggest gameplay complaints that many had against FIFA 64 was that there was a horrific delay between pressing buttons and the action taking place. Thankfully ISS 64 is razor sharp and the controls are not only responsive but offer a huge array of moves and skills to you to master. It's a game that anyone can pick up and play but it rewards you for learning how to perform tricks and skills to weave through the defence. The analog stick makes a huge impact on how you play the game. Rather than relying on the SNES control system, which in its own right was perfect, Konami have given the game analog support to really drive home the control aspect of the game. If you push the stick slightly, your player will slowly dribble, push it fully and he will run, and hold the C buttons and he will sprint. When adding this to over 20 other moves such as 1-2s and step overs, you have a game with more depth and strategy than anyone had seen in a football game before. Graphically, the game has aged, but not half as much as you may have expected. With the console being perfect for games which show terrain at an angle with no visible pixels, Konami were really able to draw out a great looking game. There is no motion capture which does make the player movement seem a little bit stiff at times, but the attention to detail is fantastic. The players will move their heads and look for the ball, slide when it's raining, even help each other off the ground. The referee will also call players over to him and give them the right bollocking when booking them. They'll also flail around on the ground looking for free kicks and penalties, so it's almost like watching the real Man United play. All the players' kits are as close to the real thing as possible, but without the FIFA license the game does take a bit of a hit in the overall presentation. Player names and teams are altered to avoid any possible legal issues, but anyone with the time and patience can quickly go into the edit mode and change them all to the real thing. A major bonus over the FIFA games is that the players' moods are randomised before and after games. Before a match you can see how your players' conditions are and make changes accordingly. Also during the game players will become tired and slow down. Others will lose confidence if you're losing badly which adds a tactical element to the game. The game really comes into its own in the multiplayer mode as you have support for up to four players and can either choose to play on the same team or divide it up across the two. There is a little slowdown and the more players you have it can be difficult to firstly distinguish who's controlling who as the players, instead of having coloured icons, they have different shapes, which takes some getting used to. Rounding off the package is the sound, which is yet again brilliant. The crowd cheers and get louder at key moments. Drums are played depending on which stadium you choose, and the announcer helps give a television-style presentation to the proceedings. I say announcer instead of commentator, as the lines of dialogue are limited and kept to key moments and incidents rather than in-play moments. There is also no Dolby surround support. Although the game is in stereo, it doesn't quite add the same atmospheric feel as the FIFA games did, but it's only a minor gripe. The rest of the game's music from the South American sounding MIDI tunes to the effects of crunching tackles and kicks all sound superb. 
In the first battle between EA's FIFA and Konami's ISS on the console, the win of via decapitation were Konami. They made FIFA 64 look like a joke, and ISS 64 outshone it in every department. It was the start of a dark period for EA's FIFA series, and it quickly lost pace with football fans, but luckily Konami were able to offer and deliver time after time again. As I said at the start of the video, the all important question is, were you a FIFA or an ISS kid? Let me know your thoughts and memories in the comments down below, and until next time.